Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And I'm going to be presenting a series of, of presentations on essential oils and perfumes, the basics. Uh, the series of lectures will uh, cover the following uh, sources and collection of essential oils, which I will cover today. Then we will move on to characteristics of essential oils from both plants and animals. And then we'll talk about the structure and composition of perfumes. And finally, the various families or accords of perfumes. Uh, to, let's start right out with a definition. Uh, and I have a general definition. Volatile oils that evaporate easily and give off characteristic aromas. Now these uh, essential oils can be uh, composed of terpenes, volatile phenols, such as the vanilla, vanilla and clove scents, and aliphatics. And they're produced by many, but not all parts of the plants. And they're in all parts of some plants, sometimes in these specialized ducts or glands or vessels. Uh, I've shown a scanning electron microscope of a peppermint leaf that uh, displays one of these ducts in the structure. And you know when you break a peppermint leaf, you release these essential oils and you're breaking that duct, releasing the essential oil aroma. But why do plants produce essential oils? There are several reasons. A uh, primary one is in the flower fragrances to attract insects for pollination, particularly bees. And of course the bees are, are gathering the pollen for their honey, but they're in, in the process pollinating the plants, which is very important, of course, in our agricultural industry would probably collapse without the presence of bees. The uh, essential oils can also repel harmful bacteria and animal depredation. For example, the leaves of eucalyptus uh, contain a strong essential oil, which you may have smelled, and uh, this wards, wards, wards off leaf eaters. And actually, when the essential oils come to the ground, they su suppress growth of competing seedlings. And walnuts give off a chemical, uh, the walnut tree gives off a chemical that has a similar effect, a, a kind of chemical warfare in the plant kingdom. The uses for essential oils are many. Uh, we'll be talking mainly about perfumes as we go along. They're also used in flavors, and they say taste can be up to 70% uh, of smell of, of, of certain aromatic compounds. And they're also in medicinals. Uh, they have antiseptic, bactericidal, and therapeutic properties. You probably all are aware of Vicks VapoRub, which, is, uh, which was utilized, uh, I know, as a young boy. My mother used it when I had a cold. And it's a cough suppressant. Uh, it aids with congestion. Um, it also helps with respiratory problems. Uh, it's antifungal, uh, and it even helps with sleep. And these essential oils are, are composed of uh, camphor, eucalyptus oil, and menthol. So there's a, there's a medicinal type of use for these essential, for some essential oils. We're going to be uh, focusing on perfumes and uh, I have a one slide history. You could spend a whole lecture on uh, the history of perfumes. Uh, the essential oils and perfumes were noted as early as 5,000 years ago in the Middle East and on the upper left I have a depiction of the queen applying uh, oils to the uh, young queen, uh, prince, the young king, Tutankhamun in 1400 BC. Uh, they found stills and pots uh, for essential oils in the, uh, in the Indus Valley, Valley in India, as well as in Cyprus, uh, as many as 4,000 years ago. So they've been around a long time. There's recipes in the Jewish Orient, and they've been found in the Orient. The Romans and Greeks had a different perfume for each part of the body. And Louis XIV was a particular avid of perfumes, and he had one a particular perfume for each day. And it's, and it's said that he, as guests would arrive in the Palace of Versailles, he would squirt them each with a little touch of perfume. It must have been a very pleasant experience to be in Versailles in those days. It's also said that Queen Cleopatra soaked her sails uh, with perfumes on the royal barge to go out and meet Mark Antony in 44 B.C. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom left are the gifts of the Magi. Uh, in Christianity, you'll note that these were important gifts. Uh, they were considered uh, symbols of spirituality. Uh, they included frankincense, myrrh, and, uh, and gold was considered an a, a, a indication of div divinity. Uh, let's take a look at frankincense. Uh, it's, a very, it's been around for 4,000 years also. 
It was burned originally as an incense, as an offering to the gods, as to God. Um, and the idea of incense is smoke or fumus, and that's the, the origin of the word perfume. It should be noted that these essential oils are basically bouquets of complex chemicals, in case of frankincense, 200 different chemicals. And there's different uh, levels of frankincense depending on the season, elevation, and microclimate, and there's different species of the Boswellia that produces it. It's also called olibanum. Um, it's a fragrance is sweet and woody, balsamic, piney, citrusy. It's a very pleasant smelling material. And it's obtained from the resin of the, uh, the Boswellia tree shown at the top. Basically, the tree is wounded and the resin exudes out and collected uh, for the, the production of the essential oil, which is ground up and steam distilled. Mirror is, is similarly uh, obtained. Uh, there's some of the solidified resin shown here. It looks the same for both frankincense and myrrh. Uh, myrrh was uh, used for embalming and, and, and spice, and it was also a symbol of suffering and affliction in, uh, in ancient times. Its fragrance is distinct from frankincense. Uh, it's an earthy, black licorice type of uh, aroma. Okay, the sources of the essential oils are odorants. We have uh, pl plant blossoms, leaves, roots and seeds, woody material, plant exudates, uh, animal sources, and synthetics. And we'll go through a number of these in this series of lectures. But let's first look at the methods for collection of essential oils or odorants from plants. Um, steam distillation is the primary uh, approach and uh, true essential oils come by this procedure. Uh, then solvent extraction is also utilized, and I'll talk a little bit more about these two. And expression, or just simply pressing out essential oils, and this is usually utilized for the peels of oranges and lemons, that juice that you produce, a, a, a very characteristic odor. But you can get a lot of contamination, and it's not commonly utilized with the other materials. And the choice is based on the cost, course and the quality of product and shown here are some beautiful lavender fields in France. Steam distillation is a very direct approach. It's a chemical approach but it's very simple to understand. Water is boiled and passed through a retort which contains the blossoms or the ground up resin or ground up wood and it vaporizes. These essential oils have a much lower boiling point than water so the steam carries them out. You cool it in a condenser and it reforms as a liquid and then in the uh, collection vessel, the essential oils as a liquid will float to the top because they are lighter in density. And that's a very straightforward procedure for collecting essential oils. Uh, and here's some of the uh, distillation units utilized. Uh, one for flower blossoms shown here on the left. And then on the right, uh, a distillation more commercial size in Australia for collecting essential oils, in this case from the eucalyptus leaves where the high, highest concentration is contained. Uh, solvent extraction is another approach for collection of essential oils. In this case, it's organic solvent such as hexane is utilized and you also need to use ethanol or a liquid CO2. In the case of extraction with hexane, and again it's in a vessel shown on the left and you have layers uh, so the solvent can percolate through the material. The hexane removes the essential oils, but it also brings out, uh, carries out a lot of waxy materials. So there's a su subsequent step shown here where ethanol is used to extract what is called the concrete, which contains those waxes. Then the ethanol is evaporated and you uh, arrive with an uh, absolute essential oil. The hexane, of course, has a lower boiling point and, as well as the ethanol, so you can use lower temperatures for uh, this procedure and it's often utilized for jasmine. Uh, liquid CO2 is a newer approach and that simply involves a high pressure treatment and the release of the pressure removes the CO2. Uh, it's more expensive but very straightforward. Okay, uh, for part two we'll be talking about characteristics of essential oils from blossoms uh, and we'll proceed with a series of lectures after that. Thank you.